Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to install and use code blocks to create C and C++ projects. So the different steps that we will see are listed in this page. So first let's download it. Here we need to type code blocks. And we need to click on this first link. Now here let's click on downloads. Then here we have to click on this link, download the binary release. And here we have to scroll down and we can find several installers. So if you have already downloaded and installed a C++ compiler, you can just download this installer and install it. But if you don't have any C or C++ compiler, you can install this installer, which already includes the MinGW uh, building tool. So in my case, I will just download this installer and I can use this link or this link. So let's select this link. Now here we need to save this installer so we can save it. But in my case, I have already downloaded it. So I will cancel this download and I will use the installer that I have already downloaded, which is this one. So let's run it. In this window, we have just to click next. And here we need to accept the license, so let's click on I agree. And here I will install everything included into this installer. So for this reason I will select full, which includes all plugins and everything. And here let's click on next. Of course we can modify the destination folder, but I will select the default path and let's click on install. In this window, I will just say no because I don't like to start code blocks now. And here, as you can see, the installation finished correctly, so let's click on next. Now let's click on finish to close this window. As you can see, a shortcut has been added to the desktop. But before starting code blocks, I advise you to add MinGW to the system environment variables. This allows code blocks to detect it automatically when you start it. So to add MinGW to the system environment variables, we have to go to the folder where we installed code blocks. So it is on the C drive in program files into this folder code blocks. And this is the folder of MinGW. So we have to open the binary folder and to copy this path because we need to add it to the system environment variable. So let's copy it. Let's close this folder. Let's go to the system environment variables. And here let's click on advanced system settings. Then in this window we need to click on environment variables. Then here we need to find the path variable, which is this one. So let's modify it. And at the beginning of this field I will paste the path that I have copied to provide it with the highest priority. Also I will add a semicolon as the separator between the different values. Now let's click on OK. OK. OK again and let's close this window. Now we can start code blocks. So let's run it. So as you can see in this window, code blocks will detect automatically the available compiler. So this is the available compiler that I have added to the system environment variables. So let's select it and let's click on set as default. Now we can click on OK. Now in this window it is asked if I want to associate code blocks with C and C++ files, which is not what I want. So I will select no, leave everything as it is and I will click on OK. Now code blocks has been started correctly and if for any reason you did not add the C and C++ compiler to code blocks, you can correct this by going to settings. Then here you have to go to compiler and in this window you have to click on toolchain executables and here you can modify the path for MinGW. So for me it is the right path but if you don't have this value or if this value is empty you can click on this button and then you have to select the folder that contains your MinGW. In my case everything is configured correctly so I will just close this window. And now we can create a simple C or C++ file without creating a project. So first let's start by creating a simple C++ file. I have just to click on this button, new file, 
or I can go to file then new then empty file so now I can complete the C++ file so I will paste the source code that I have already prepared and I have to save this file so to save it I can click on control plus s simultaneously or I can go to file then save file so this file I will just save it on the desktop into a folder that I will call cpp and the file I will call it main.cpp now to run this file I have just to click on this button and it is asked if I want to build the file now of course I want to build it because I want to execute it so let's click on yes now this is the obtained window it asks me to provide the name so before asking for the name it prints this message which is what is done by this source code so in this source code first of all we need to print this text to the user then we need to ask the user to provide the name then we will read the name from the user and finally we will print the name as a confirmation so let's go back to the obtained window and here let's provide the name for example let's say bill gates and as you can see this is the confirmation now i can hit any key to close this window now we can close this file and instead of creating a simple file we can create a new project so we have to go to file the new and project so here i will create a simple console application so i have to select console then go and in this window it is asked to click next but this window seems useless so i can select this checkbox for this window to not appear again so let's click next so here i will select c++ because i want to create a c++ application then let's click next so here I have to provide the project name. I will just call it CPP project. Also, I need to provide the folder where to save this project. So I will create a new folder on my documents that I will call code blocks projects. So let's select this folder. And now let's click next so here this is the compiler that will be used we have to accept it of course if you have multiple compilers you can select the one that you want to use also it is possible to create two versions of the application one for debugging and one the release version so in my case I don't like to create a version for debugging so I will uncheck this box I will just keep a version which is the release version now let's click on finish and the project has been created by default it includes this file so this is a simple c++ file to run it we have just to click on this button and of course we need to build this file so let's click yes to build the file then execute it and in this window we have the output of the file hello world so let's click on any key to close uh, this window also if you want only to build the file without executing it you can go to build then build or also you can click on rebuild if you want to remove all previous binary files so if i click on rebuild this warning is displayed to ask me are you sure to remove the previous binary files so let's click on yes and the file has been built now i can click on this button and this is the result of the execution now let's add a new C++ file to this project. So to do this, I have just to go to file, then new, and then I have to click on empty file. So it is asked if I want to add this file to the current project. The answer is yes. And I have to save this file first. So I will call it test.cpp. So this file has been added. I can just make a copy of a source code that I have already prepared which is the previous source code so this source code includes this main method it allows us to print this text to the user and to ask the user to provide his name so let's save this file and let's build the application again 
so if I go to build then I click on rebuild of course I have to confirm what I will obtain is an error so the error does not provide a lot of information so to have more information about this error we can go to the build log tab and here we can see more information about the error and here the error is because we have multiple methods called main as you can see in test.cpp I have this main method and in main.cpp I have the main method so I can modify the name of this main method into main.cpp because I want to execute test.cpp so I will just modify the name of this main method and I will call it main2 let's save this file and let's build the application again so let's go to build then rebuild let's click on yes this time the project has been built correctly and I don't have any error now to run it I have just to click on this button and as you can see this is the output of the second file called test.cpp so I have to provide the name so let's provide the name Bill Gates and this is the confirmation of the name now let's modify the file main.cpp so I will call the main2 method main method again and I will go to test.cpp then here I will modify the name of this method I will just call it void print text now I can remove this last statement because the method is of type void and let's copy the name of this method of course we need to save the file and in the main.cpp I will just print the name of the method that I want to call let's add a semicolon and let's save this file let's build the project and let's run it again of course here I have an error this is because I did not declare this function inside this file so let's correct this now let's save this file and let's build it so I have to go to build then rebuild yes and here I don't have any error so let's run this project and here as we can see this is the output so I can provide any name and this is the confirmation of the name now let's suppose that we want to modify the name of this file so to modify the name of this test.cpp file first we need to close it then we need to make a right click on the project name and here we have to click on open project folder in file explorer or in file browser then here we can modify the name of this file so I will just make a right click then rename and I will call it print info let's click on ok so the name has been modified and let's go back to the project so here this file has been modified if I click on it it is mentioned that this file is not available so I have just to remove it from the project and I can make a right click then remove file from project now I need to make a right click on the project and to click on add files so here I have to select the file that I have renamed and I want to add to the project now let's click on open and this time the file has been added if I open it this is the content of this file so if I click on build then rebuild of course I have to confirm then I have to click on run I will obtain the same output as before so let's provide any name and now let's suppose that I want to delete this file so I will just copy all the statements of this file and I will paste them in the main method then I will remove this declaration and now I can remove this file so to remove it I have just to make a right click then remove file from project of course I need now to save the file and now I can close it and I can also close this project so to close the project I have to make a right click then close project 
Of course, the project has been modified, so it is asked if I want to save it or not. So let's click on yes. And I can create a new project. So let's go to file, then new, then project. I will select console application, then go. And here I have to select the project type. It will be C++, so let's click next. Then I have to provide the project name. So let's call it second project. So the previous folder has been selected here and I can accept it to save the second project. Now let's click on next and here I will click on finish. Now the second project has been created and it contains this default file. And let's suppose that I want to open an existing project. So to open a previous project, I can go to file, then open. Then I have to select the project that I want. So the projects that I have created are created in documents into a folder called code blocks projects. And I want to open the first project, which is called CPP project. So to open the project, I have to select cppproject.cbp. So I have to select this file, then open. So the CPP project has been opened and it contains the file that I have created previously. Now here, as you can see, we have two projects. The second one is written in bold, but the first one is written in an ordinary text. This means that the CPP project is actually selected. So if I click on run, the CPP project will be executed. So let's click on this button. And here you can see that CPP project is being executed. Now, if I want to execute this project, I have just to make a right click and to click on activate project. So this project is now activated. And if I click on run, this project will be executed. But of course, this project has not been built yet. So we have to click on build, then build. And then we can click on run. And as you can see, this is the output of the project called second project, which is actually written in bold. Now, if I want to add a new C++ file, it will be added to the activated project, which is second project in our case. So if I click on file, then new, then empty file, the file will be added to the active project. So let's click on yes. And I will call this file test.cpp. As you can see, test.cpp has been added to the project second project. Now let's add some C++ code to this file. So this function allows us to print the different integer from the first value till the last value. So we want to use this method inside main.cpp which belongs to second project. So here, first of all, we need to declare this method. So I have just to copy all of this declaration. Of course, I need to save this file. Then let's go to main.cpp and let's paste the method declaration. Of course, I have to add a semicolon. And now I can use this method inside the main method. So let's copy the name and here I will just call it. Now let's save this file and let's build the project. Now let's run it. As you can see, this is the text printed by the main method and these are the integers printed by the method print values. Now to close these two projects, we have just to make a right click, then close project. Of course, we need to save the modifications of this project, so let's click on yes. And let's close this project as well. Finally, thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel.